Poppet by Dick King Smith. When Poppet was born, he had absolutely no idea what sort of animal he was. He looked around and saw that he was surrounded by a forest of legs. Huge legs they were, thick and tall and greyish in colour. With huge feet on the end of them, Poppet looked up and saw on top of all those legs huge bodies with huge heads and huge ears and amazingly long, long noses. He was in fact looking up at his mother and a number of his aunties who had all come along to inspect the new baby. Oh, said the auntie, isn't he a poppet? The baby's mother looked extremely pleased. What are you going to call him? said another auntie. The baby's mother, whose own name was Omar, said, I don't know. I haven't had time to think. And then she thought for a bit. Hmm. But I do now. I'm going to call him Poppet. And she put the tip of her trunk against one of the baby's ears and whispered, Hello, baby. I'm your mum. And your name is Poppet. Poppet looked up at Omar and the other huge animals and said, Please, what sort of animals are you? Elephants, said Omar. We are African elephants. Oh, said Poppet, but you said you were my mum. Yes. So does that make me an African elephant? Yes. Poppet looked puzzled. There must be some mistake. He thought, you're enormous, he said, and I'm very small. We can't be the same animal. Oh, yes, we are, said Omar. It's just that you're a baby elephant, but you'll grow, said one of the aunties, and grow, said another, and grow, and grow, and grow, said all the other others, until you're as big as we are, said Omar. You might even be bigger one day. Tomorrow, said Poppet. At, at this, the aunties all laughed, quietly making snuffling noises in their trunks before moving slowly and heavily away, leaving mother and baby alone together. No, not tomorrow, Poppet, said Omar gently. Elephants take a long, long time to grow to full size, but you'll get there one day. There's nothing to stop you, for we are too big and our skins are too thick for any other creature in Africa to hurt us, except for two. What are they, Mum? asked Poppet. One, said Omar, is a monkey-like thing called a man. Men kill elephants. Why? For their tusks. What are tusks? Great big long teeth that elephants have, like these two of mine. I haven't got any. You will. But you should be all right because we live in a special place called a reserve where elephants are protected. Oh, said Poppet, but you said there were two creatures that could hurt us. What's the other one besides a man? A mouse, said Omar. Oh, said Poppet, are they even bigger and stronger than us, these mouses? Mice, said Omar, are very small, and what's more, mice live in holes, and that's the trouble. She stretched out her long, long trunk till the top was right in front of Poppet's face. What do you see, Poppet? she said. A hole, said Poppet. Then Omar, speaking slowly and solemnly, repeated to her newborn child the old elephant's wife's tale that her mother had told her when she was a baby, a tale in which she had always believed. Poppet, my son, she said, first, never have anything to do with mice. Second, if you should be unfortunate enough to meet one, keep your trunk curled up out of the way. Never, never put the tip of it anywhere near a mouse. Otherwise, the most dreadful thing imaginable will happen to you. 
What's that? said Poppet. The mouse will run up inside of your trunk. Poppet thought about this for the rest of the first day of his life. He imagined this thing called a mouse running alongside ew, inside his little trunk and he did not like the thought of it at all. Suppose one did. How would he get rid of it? Blow it out? He supposed and every so often for the rest of the day he blew very hard suddenly down his trunk just in case one of the awful creatures had somehow crept in. I don't even know what they look like, he thought. Only that they're small. The next morning, while the elephant herd was browsing upon the leaves of some large trees, Poppet was standing beside his mother when he saw a strange animal moving about on the bark of the trees. What it was he didn't know, but it was certainly small. Carefully curling his trunk up and out of harm's way, Poppet bent his head towards it. Close up, he could see that the creature, though small, was long, with a great many joints to its dark brown body and a very great many legs. Perfect for crawling up elephant, elephant's trunks, he thought. I bet you were one, he said politely. Excuse me, but are you a mouse? A mouse, said the creature. Yeah, I thought you might be. You're joking. Pull the other one. Other what? Leg. What does it mean? Poppet thought. It's got hundreds of legs. Well, if you're not a mouse, he said, what are you? I'm a giant millipede, said the long wriggly creature. A giant, said Poppet. Oh, stop taking the mickey, said the millipede huffily. You knew all the time, didn't you? I could tell. I wasn't born yesterday. I was, said Poppet as the giant millipede rippled away. But anyway, I've learned something. That animal was not a mouse. In the days and weeks that followed, he asked quite a number of small creatures whether they were mice. He asked beetles and grubs and worms and caterpillars and little lizards and small frogs and some replied jokily and some replied angrily and some just didn't answer at all. Till at last Poppet rather forgot about his mother's dire warning and gave himself up to enjoying the carefree life of a baby elephant. He used his trunk for reaching up and pulling down leaves and twigs and for sucking up water when the herd went to the river for a drink. And then blowing water all over himself when he was nice and wet he would go to the dusty place and use his trunk to give himself a dust bath. So that when he finished up, beautiful, he, always, he looked beautiful and muddy. And then he'd go back into the river and have a lovely bath. Go right under the water with just the tip of his trunk sticking up above the surface like a snorkel. A trunk, Poppet decided, was a brilliant thing to have. As for mice, he never thought about them anymore. Then one hot afternoon, when it was about, he was about a month old, and his mother and all the aunties were standing resting in the shade, Poppet wandered off a little way exploring. He was using his trunk to search about in the grass as he went along, when suddenly he saw in front of him an animal that he had not previously met. It was furry and brown with large tulip shaped ears beady black eyes and a longish, hairless tail. Poppet stretched out his trunk towards it and sniffed it. Even when the tip of his trunk was right before the creature's face, it didn't occur to him that this animal was small and, without much hope, because he'd been wrong so many times, he said, Are you a mouse? As a matter of fact, said the animal, I am. And you know what? Mice do to elephants, don't you? Hastily, Poppet raised his trunk. Aha, said the mouse. Your mum told you, didn't she? 
told me what? That mice run up inside elephants' trunks. Well, yeah, she did. You believed her? Yeah. The mouse let out a loud squeak. Whether of anger or fright, Poppet did not know. In fact, it was a delight. What are you called, boy? It said. Poppet, what about you? My name, said the mouse, is Momo, and I'm very glad to meet you. Oh, said Poppet, why? Because, said Momo, when I was very young, my mother told me this story about mice and elephants, and I didn't believe her. That's rubbish, I thought. One day, I said to myself, I'll meet an elephant and I'll find out if it's true. And now I've met one. But you're not going to find out, said Poppet, and he curled his trunk even higher. Oh, come on, said Momo. Be a sport. Just let me have a look inside. No, no, cried Poppet. You'll crawl in. I won't, honest. Promise. Cross my heart. So very slowly, Poppet uncurled his trunk and lowered the tip of it towards the waiting mouse. The nearer it got to Momo, the more nervous Poppet got. I must be mad, he thought. Believing a mouse's promise, mice probably don't know the meaning of the word. Then suddenly he felt the tickle of whiskers at the very end of his trunk as Momo peered into it and he gave an enormous achoo! Elephants, like people, shut their eyes when they sneeze. And when Poppet opened his again, it was to see the mouse had been blown head over heels by the force of the blast. Steady on, cried Momo. What are you playing at? Sorry, said Poppet. I sneezed. Oh, well, bless you. Thanks. It was your whiskers. They tickled. Just testing a mouse can go into any hole that's wider than its whiskers. And was it? It would have been very tight fit, said Momo. Might be possible with a full-grown elephant, but I shouldn't have cared to try with you, Poppet, my lad. Anyway, to be quite frank, it looked pretty damp and, ugh, and uninviting up there, even before the sneeze. As it is, I'm soaked. I'll dry you, said Poppet. And he pointed his trunk at the mouse and blew long, slow, hot breaths over him. It was while he was doing this that he suddenly heard his mother's voice, and a very angry voice it was. Omar had walked up behind him quite silently, as elephants do on their cushioned feet, only to see her son, with his trunk outstretched, the tip of it only centimetres away from a mouse. She let out a furious trumpet and Momo vanished from sight. What did I tell you? screamed Omar. Keep away from mice. Do you hear me? Get out of my way now and I'll squash this one flat. Oh, don't, Mum, cried Poppet. He's my friend. Your friend, snorted Omar. You're not just a bad child, you're a mad child. And she went stamping about in the grass till she'd flattened a big patch of it. That should have fixed the horrid creature, she said, and she moved away to rejoin the herd, grumbling to herself. Poppet stood sadly beside the trampled patch. Alas, poor mouse, he said, it's all my fault that he's dead. No, he isn't, said a voice, and out of the grass poked a little brown head, whiskers twitching. Momo cried Poppet, you're not hurt. Got a bit of a headache. How on earth did you survive? Under earth. Went down a hole, sharpest, said the mouse. But not before I heard what you said, which was nice of you. Poppet, you're my friend too. <music> Meanwhile, Omar was telling the aunties about her naughty child. One of the first things I told him, she said, was to keep away from mice. We all know that every mouse is just waiting for a chance to run up our trunks. We do, said the aunties. And no doubt you'll have gave your kids the same warning. We did, said the aunties. And what have I just found? Only my boy with the tip of his trunk right beside a mouse, that's all. I told him off, I can tell you. No doubt you'd have done the same. We would, said the aunties. Children, said Omar, they just don't listen. 
Grown-ups, said Poppet to Momo at the very same time. They don't treat children fairly. Grown-ups don't. I couldn't have explained to Mum if she'd let me. I could have told her. You're wrong. Mice don't run up elephants' trunks. I know. My friend told me. But no, I never get the chance. She just yells at me. I heard it, said Momo. Let's just hope we're more understanding when we're grown-ups, said Poppet. Actually, said Momo, I'm a grown-up already. Oh? Sorry, I didn't realise you're so, um, um, small? Well, yes. Tell you what, Poppet, said the mouse, do you agree that it would be a good thing if elephants stopped being frightened of mice? Yes, I do. And do you agree that it would be a good thing if elephants stopped trying to squash mice? Oh, yes, I do. Right then, this is my plan. Listen carefully. And so it was that later that day when the herd had been down to the river to bathe and the elephants were all standing in the shade resting, Poppet said to Omar, Mom, will you promise not to yell at me if I tell you something? Of course I won't, said Omar, who was already ashamed of losing her temper with the little one. Of course you won't, promise? No, of course I won't yell at you. All right then, said Poppet, it's this. Mice do not run up inside elephants' trunks. They never have and they never will. Omar snorted. Come and listen to this, she called to the aunties. And when they had all gathered round, she made Poppet repeat his words. Silly boy, said one auntie. And stupid child, said another. And a third. And a third said, you had a narrow escape this morning. You might not be so lucky next time. Wait here, please, said Poppet. And he disappeared into some bushes. When he emerged again, Omar and the aunties could see that he was holding something in the tip of his trunk. Something furry and brown with large tulip-shaped ears, beady black eyes and a longish hairless tail. A mouse! <laughs> How horrified they all were. They formed a circle around Poppet. Their trunks held high, out of the reach of the dreaded creature that he carried. They shifted anxiously from foot to foot, fanning their great ears. Poppet put the mouse carefully down upon the ground. This is Momo, he said to Umar and the aunties. My friend, like I told you, Mum. I know I'm only a child, but Momo is a grown-up, even though you may think he's not grown very far. However... He has a grown-up brain, I can tell you, and he wishes to address you all, if you would be kind enough to listen to him. So astonished were the elephants, first to see Poppet carrying the mouse, and then to hear him make such a speech, that they stopped fidgeting and stood silent, except for the rumbling in their tummies, which they couldn't help. Momo sat on his hunkers. Ladies, <coughs> he said. It's a great privilege to be allowed to speak to you. And he turned to face Umar. Especially you, madam. The mother of a truly remarkable child. Elephants can't blush, but if Umar could have done, she would have done. Poppet, the mouse went on, is a name that all elephants will remember for all time. Since it is with a little help from myself, who has been the first of his kind to discover that mice do not never have and never will run up the inside of an elephant's trunk. I call upon him now to conclude this historic day by offering to all of you the proof of what I have just said. So that none of you here, indeed none of your kind, throughout the length and breadth of Africa, need ever worry about meeting a mouse trunk to face. Now, Poppet, say your piece. Mum, said Poppet, do you love me? Oh, yes, Poppet, said Umar. Would you do anything for me? Oh, yes. Then uncurl your trunk and stretch out the tip of it to Momo. Oh, no, Poppet, I, I couldn't. Courage, madam, said Momo. While all the other aunties cried, go on, yeah, go on, knowing that they didn't have to do it. It'll be all right, Mum, said Poppet, honest. So very slowly... With her eyes tight shut, Umar uncoiled her trunk 
and laid the tip of it on the ground, right beside the mouse. Momo peered, peered at it carefully, remembering Poppet's sneeze not to touch it with his whiskers. Ugh, yuck! Ugh, he said softly. Then he said to Umar, Thank you, madam. I appreciate your confidence and your courage and I am filled with admiration for the undoubted beauty, strength and dexterity of your magnificent nasal appendage. I hope, however, that you will forgive me if I say that nothing in this world could ever persuade me to creep up your trunk. I had, to job, I had a job to keep a straight face, said Momo, when the herd had moved away, shaking their great heads in wonder at what had just happened. Umar especially seemed quite overcome by what had happened. And when Poppet said to her, Mom, can I stay and play with Momo? She answered, Yes, of course, dear. As if hypnotised. When they were alone, Poppet said, What shall we play? Can we think of a game? Yes, said Momo. Put down your trunk uh, and I'll run up it. Oh, no, cried Poppet. You mean it's true after all. What Mum told me, it's true. And I thought you were my friend. I am, Dafty, said Momo. Don't get your trunk in a twist. I just want to run up the outside. <laughs>